thank you so much for having me here to open the uh, SASPA conference 2018. It is an utter privilege. Um, frankly, I think I've got the best job in the world as Minister for Education in South Australia. I spend many of my days visiting schools, talking with school leaders, talking with teachers, parents and indeed students. And I get to call that work, and it's fantastic. It fills me with inspiration every day. We have 500 public schools in South Australia, and it is an extremely uh, significant responsibility that I take very seriously uh, in working with the department heads in uh, supporting those schools. The uh, priority that the government puts on education, I'll put a, into some context in a little bit later, uh, but every day that I do that work, I think it's incredibly important for me to also spend as much time listening to principals, school leaders, teachers, academics, experts, stakeholders, parents, as I say, and children as it is me talking. Um, I'm constantly impressed by the amazing work that goes on in our schools, and particularly the role that you play as leaders in the schools. It's People, sometimes people come to me with uh, reports that talk about statistics. We've worked out that it is 66% most important thing is the teachers, and then it's 32% most important that's the principals, or it's 50%. Whatever is going on in schools, whether it is the work that you're doing as leaders in supporting your teachers, or the work that you're doing as leaders in managing your school org organisation, or the work that you are doing as leaders uh, in supporting and providing pastoral care and support uh, to your students, or indeed in helping the needs of your uh, parent community, uh, there cannot be a more important single role in a school, or indeed uh, in public service, in my view, than a principal of a school. Uh, and what we ask of you is significant, and what you deliver for the people of South South Australia is equally significant. You are also at the heart of what we are endeavouring to do in terms of making our schools even better than they are. I was opposition uh, shadow education minister for a couple of years, uh, as Joe said. I started in early 2016. I'd had some engagement in the school sector uh, prior to that in a policy sense. Um, I'd like to thank many of you who were kind enough to host me. Uh, in your schools during that period and talk to me about your aspirations and your ideas about how we can do a better job as a government of delivering for education. I also appreciate there's a couple of people in the room who were kind enough to let me sit on their governing councils in uh, Nord Murray Alter and Charles Campbell. Uh, and that was a role that I really appreciated as a local member of parliament, and I was very sorry when I had to give that up on taking this uh, job, because I think having that insight into how those local schools work is something that all members of parliament appreciate. Um, SASPA was always a partner in engagement, in talking, in opposition, uh, providing us with advice on things that we should be considering. And Peter and your team, I thank you for that engagement, and that engagement continues uh, now that the Liberal Party is in government. And, uh, we've had an election on March the 17th, and for the first time in 16 years, this would be probably the first time in 17 years, uh, it's a Liberal Minister for Education that gets to address this conference. And that, of course, uh, is a new experience for me. Uh, and so I think I'll just touch a little bit on the new Liberal government, because I think it is no doubt relevant to all of you and your schools. The first Liberal government in 16 years. This is a Liberal government for which education is an absolute critical and central plank uh, in our ambitions for this state. Education is critical for our long-term social well-being and economic prosperity as a state. If we improve education, then we improve social well-being and economic prosperity. If we neglect education, uh, then both of those factors will be uh, uh, going backwards, obviously. And about two and a half years ago, and most of you would have been principals then, so you probably got in the post uh, a document from the Liberal Party entitled 2036. Now, it was maligned in the press as motherhood statements uh, or not specific enough or not containing detailed enough policy, but 2036 was the policy framework which the Liberal Party team set itself going forward. Uh, it's a document that was written by members of parliament. We don't have, oppositions don't tend to have uh, large staff or uh, intelligent department people helping them out. You're reliant on the members of parliament to do that work and the stakeholders that they talk to. 2036 was actually released the week that I became the shadow education minister. So the education chapter in it 
uh, is, was largely written by my predecessor, although it contains values that everybody in the Liberal Party signed up to. But the key thing about 2036 and why we spent some time putting it together was because we had an idea that government is going to govern best when we think about the long-term needs of the state and its future and its future prosperity, rather than short-term tactics about how to win the next election uh, or how to win this seat or that seat. 2036 is South Australia's bicentenary, and we tried to envision what sort of state did we want South Australia to look like at the time of our bicentenary. The ideas contained in it are about that long-term vision. And so in the two years between the release of 2036 and the last election, our policy agenda, therefore, was always tested against that framework of does this policy fit within the framework of what we envisioned for South Australia's long-term future? It's also a government that is focused on delivering for all South Australians. And again, as I say, not focused on electoral cycles and marginal seats. And you would have seen evidence of that yesterday when despite the fact that the Liberal Party hadn't made a commitment to build a new school in Wyala, and the fact that the Liberal Party is probably going to be finding it a little bit difficult to win the seat around Wyala. For no electoral benefit for the Liberal Party, the Cabinet has made a decision to invest $100 million uh, in building new education infrastructure in that town because it is so clearly and sorely needed. There are no, there's no question that it is indeed people and teachers and leaders who drive school improvement far more than infrastructure. But all of you who aren't principals in Wyala, uh, with the slight exception of a couple of multi-campus schools, are in a situation where you have no point of transition within the school from when your child, when the student arrives in year eight through to year 12. Those points of transition we know are significant points of risk for any student. And we lose so many of those Wyala students as they're going from the eight to 10 schools the junior high schools, which is, in our view, an outdated concept, uh, through to that 11 and 12. And the proof is in the pudding. So many of those students don't go on to uh, Edward John Eyre High School. And Edward John Eyre High School has incredibly important relationships uh, with TAFE and training, and uh, the CE of TAFE describes it as one of the most successful uh, uh, schools in South Australia from that point of view. But we want to lift educational achievement in Wyala. Uh, and we believe that that will be an easier job for all of the leaders and teachers in that town uh, with that new infrastructure. It's not about politics in any way, because there's very little, little political benefit for the government. It is about improving outcomes for students across South Australia. And that is because the Liberal Party has an ambition and the new government has an ambition that South Australia will be known for having the best education system, the best schools in this country. That every child in every classroom in every school in this state uh, will be supported to receive the growth that they need to fulfill their potential. There are so many, so many great teachers and great principals and great schools in South Australia, but there's not one item in public policy. Somebody who's doing great work can do even better work. There is somebody who's doing good work can do great work. There is room for growth in everything that we do, and indeed in every child. That is what we must be looking for. So in the years ahead, we're going to be asking even more of you as secondary leaders, because as you'd know, uh, year seven will be moving into high school. Uh, year seven is in, I don't need to tell you, but it's in high school in every other state in Australia. Uh, I've met with the Queensland and Western Australian ministers in recent uh, months as the, I, I get to chair the COAG Education Ministers Council. It's Adelaide's turn this year. Uh, and I can tell you they're not sorry that they've made the shift. They're very happy with how it's working in their schools. Uh, because they've moved recently, we get to learn the lessons from their transitions and we're going through that process at the moment. And Dr. Carolyn Crozabalo in the Education Department has been appointed to lead that work. I'm sure that all of you will have some engagement with her and her team uh, in the coming years. Um, year seven going into high school will be by 2022. We're investigating whether there are any early transition options, uh, but we'll make those decisions based on what's going to be in the best educational interests of our students. Uh, and again, not building it around political cycles. But it was all of the advice we received, including from this organisation, whose options paper uh, and uh, discussion paper released in 2016, uh, made the point, you can't rush this. It must be done over several years. 
Uh, now, the SASPA uh, reference paper also suggested that you should do it at the same time in every sector. Now, that's not going to be possible here in South Australia because to do that, that would mean doing it next year. And I've got a feeling some of you might, some of you might suggest that that was not possible. So 2022 is the year, unless we we're uh, convinced that there are some ways of moving it early in some places. Um, but that gives us time to get it right, to make sure that the infrastructure is right uh, in all of those schools and to ensure that uh, the middle school pedagogy uh, pr and practice uh, is confirmed in all of the teachers' minds. Uh, some extra students will be coming into high schools, uh, potentially some extra teachers. Some of those may have been primary school teachers who are doing some uh, work on depth understanding of subject areas. Uh, indeed, some of them uh, may be expansions in some schools and uh, that that is a significant body of work and we'll make sure that we get it right. Each part of the system, of course, has a role to play in that shared ambition of having the best schools in Australia. We've talked a little bit about the work you're doing in schools. I want to talk a little bit about the work that the people in central office do and with uh, directors and executive directors from the department I've uh, noticed around the room. Uh, the people who work in Flinders Street and in Hindmarsh uh, I've been so impressed in the uh, four or five months that I've been the minister uh, with their engagement, with their encouragement and with the support that they're looking forward to giving schools here in South Australia. Um, you'll be aware that leaders are working to design a new school improvement model to support a sustained approach to improvement that focuses on, as I talked about, growth for every child and every young person. The model comprises four key elements that will provide you with more accurate information about the current performance of your school, new tools and processes to facilitate high quality improvement planning, and differentiated strategies for teaching literacy and numeracy. Now, providing differentiated support to schools based on where they're at and what their individual needs are is at the heart of making sure we achieve improved outcomes for children and young people. Um, and I think that one of the things that I've noticed as Shadow Education Minister for the two years leading up to government, and indeed in the times that I've worked in education policy before, is often there's a sense of us and them between schools and head office. There's a sense that accountability is a one-way street and that, uh, and I, I remember uh, hearing stories about the, the room in Hindmarsh that was fitted out, uh, that some of you would have spent some time in with the computer screens. The, um, the idea that everything is top-down instruction doesn't work because reform only works when you have buy-in from everyone involved. And that, I think, is the key to what the department CE Rick Purse uh, has uh, sought to do over the last couple of years since his appointment is to break down those barriers between head office, if you like, and schools and sites, and to understand that it's not an us and them, it's all of us together, working together for the same goals. And that's why accountability must be matched with support. And the school improvement model, one of the key factors of it is the supports that will be provided to schools, not just the accountabilities. And accountability exists as much to support schools uh, as it is so that head office knows how schools are going. It's how we best are able to provide the supports that are going to benefit schools in their local contexts. As principals, of course, you have an incredibly important, the most important role to play in ensuring that every South Australian student receives that high quality teaching and learning they need to achieve their potential. We believe that the new school improvement model will support you to help you make the best decisions within that local context. We know that a strong school culture characterised by shared beliefs and values underpins everything that happens within a school and has a significant impact on positive learning for students, teachers and leaders. Your work in building this culture with your staff teams and the community more broadly is fundamentally important to us achieving our aspirations as a system. And it's our job to ensure you get that support that you need. Uh, we also have the new Professional and Leadership Academy, uh, which is being supported by this new government and due to commence next year. And we believe that will better, help better prepare you to lead the education improvement in your schools and support your teachers to give evidence-based outcomes, evidence-based approaches in classrooms. The Academy will focus on contemporary and evidence-based approaches to teaching and leadership that are aligned with the school improvement model and it will play a significant part in helping you as principals have the skills and evidence base you need to make sure your schools are looking to the future and setting your students up for success. I'd like to conclude my remarks with a few words of thank you. I want to thank you for the commitment that you bring to your roles, for all of the times when you keep going when it feels thankless and exhausting, and when each person who walks through your door 
seems to bring a new challenge and not always a reasonable challenge to be faced. It is impossible to overstate the importance of your work and you are changing lives for the better and shaping the future of our state. This is a huge responsibility. I know that your jobs can be some of the most complex and challenging, but I'm sure also some of the most rewarding in this state. I wish you all the very best for your conference in the coming days. The conferences like this are always an excellent opportunity to hear new ideas, to learn and make connections with colleagues who have similar challenges but potentially uh, in different contexts and face things from different perspectives. It's sharing of ideas, uh, information and challenges is critical. I know that the presentations are going to be enlightening uh, and challenging and interesting and inspiring. I look forward to continuing to work with you in the years ahead. Thank you so much for your work, and I guess I declare at this point, the conference is open. Thank you very much. <laughs>